Hello, Year 6, and welcome to Monday, the 4th of May's maths video. Okay, so this week we're going to be having a look at decimals, and you can see here the first topic for today that we're looking at is rounding decimals. So we've got some examples here for us to have a go at rounding. Let's have a look at this one. I've got 5.43, and it's told me that I need to round this number to one decimal place. What does one decimal place mean? One decimal place means when you have one number after the decimal point. So one decimal place is one number after the decimal point. We could also say rounding to one decimal place is the same as rounding to the nearest tenth because this is the tenths column which is the first column after the decimal point so let's have a look now a nice way to lay out rounding questions is to use a number line because it becomes visually easier to see i know that i've got the tenth 5.4 which is which i'm going to put here i've got 5.4 i've got four tenths there so if I'm rounding down, my number will be 5.4. If I have to round it up, the next tenth after 5.4 is 5.5. And here in the middle, what comes halfway between 5.4 and 5.5? Well, that's 5.45. So you put the what comes in the middle to help you when it comes to the rounding. Let's have a look then. So we've got 5.43. Well, where would 5.4? Four, three go on a number line would it go here this side or would it go here well it's going to go this side probably about about there and this makes it really easily visually to see are we going to round up or are we rounding down well actually 5.43 is smaller than 5.45 therefore we round down to 5.4 so our answer in this box here will be 5.4 Let's now have a look at this one. 14.39. Have a think to yourself then. If I've got 14.39, what will I put here, this side of my number line? What would I put this side of my number line? And remember that we're rounding to the nearest tenth still. That's the nearest tenth. Well, I know here I would have 14.3 because that's the tenth which is before 14.39. What tenth would be afterwards? Well, that's 14.4. What would go in the middle? 14.4. So where about on my number line would 14.39 go? Would it go here or here? It would obviously go here. Because if I'm counting in tenths, 14.39, then it goes to 14.4. So 14.39 will be about there. So am I going to round up or down? Hopefully you realise that I'm rounding up. 14.4. Is there another way to do this? We can set out the number line. That's a perfectly good method. But is there another method? Well, hopefully you'll be able to remember from our lessons in school. If we have a look here, I've got four and three and I'm rounding to the nearest tenth. So if we come back to this question, this is the column which I'm going to underline here. I know this is the column that I'm going to keep. We look at this column here. And this column says three. Is three above or below five? It's below. If it's below five, one, two, three or four, we round down. So I know that it will be 5.4. That's another way to do it. Let's see if we can apply that method to this question here. So firstly, what am I rounding to? One decimal place to the nearest tenth. I'm going to underline that three there. Which means the column that I need to look at is this one. 
All right, I've got nine. Therefore, do I need to round up or down? I round up. So then I come back to this column and then this becomes four. So you can use you can use either method that I've just shown you there, the number line method, or looking at the columns and working out whether you need to round up or down. Using that method, I'd like you to have a go at these two questions here. You can pause the video and have a go. OK, then. So let's have a look at this one. 26.65 rounded to the nearest tenth. So, so I'm not going to draw out the number line, but if you're using that method, that's a perfectly good method. Let's have a look. To the nearest tenth, I'm going to underline the six here. I'm looking at the five. Because it's five, I know that I need to round up. So therefore, my six becomes seven. Twenty-six point seven. Now let's have a look at this one. This one looks a little bit more confusing because I've got some more numbers in it here. But it is still the same process. Here's my three here. I'm underlining that because I'm looking at one decimal place in the tenths column. I'm going to draw an arrow because this is the column that I've got to look at next to the tenths. Is it above five or is it below? Well, it's above, so therefore I need to round up. So my answer becomes 140.4. Excellent. Right then, let's move on. We've got some more here, and these are a bit trickier because they're even bigger numbers. And also because we are now rounding them to two decimal places. So what do we think two decimal places mean? Well, two decimal places means that we are rounding to two decimal places after the decimal point. We could also say we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. Because two decimal places after the decimal point, this number here is in the hundredths column. Let's have a look at this one using the number line. So I have got 8.909, so I've set up my number line here. I'm thinking, okay, so well, what hundredth comes before it? What hundredth comes after it? 8.90 and 8.91. What is in the middle of 8.90 and 8.91? Well, that'll be 8.905. Where would my number go on this number line? Would it go this side or would it go this side? Good, it would go over here. Therefore, am I rounding up or down? I'm rounding up. And you can see how there is two decim there are two numbers after the decimal point. Therefore, we've rounded to two decimal places. I'll also show you this, this method here. So what we could do is we say, OK, so I'm rounding to two decimal places. So I'm going to underline this one. This is my two decimal place column, my hundredths column. Now I need to look at my, my nine. It's nine. So do I round up or down? I round up, good, so which means my zero would then become one. So there's both methods. Let's have a look at this one now. We'll have another go at this one together. So be having to think to yourself, what do you think would go this side of my number line? What do you think would go this side of my number line? OK, so before the hundredth before 13.363 is 13.36. What would be after it? 13.37. What would be in the middle? 13.37. Three, six, five. So where would my number go on my number line? It will go about here. 
So am I rounding up or down? I'm rounding down, so my number will be 13.36. And again, let's have a look at it using uh, this method. I'm underlining my six because I'm rounding to two decimal places. I'm putting an arrow above my three because this is the number that I've got to look at to determine whether I'm going to round up or whether I'm going to round down. It's three. So I know that I'm rounding down. Therefore, the answer is 13.36. OK, you can go ahead and pause the video now. Have a go at both of these questions. Use the number line. Use this method. It's up to you. Right, let's have a look and go through them. I'm going to use this method here. 34.245 rounded to two decimal places, rounded to the nearest hundredth. I underline my number in my hundredth column. I put an arrow for the number next to it. It's five. If it's five, what do I do? Do I round up? Do I round down? I round up. Therefore, my answer becomes 34.25. Excellent. Now let's look at this one. 307.3822. Once again, underline the number in the second decimal place column, in the hundredths column. Put an arrow here. This is the number I need to look at. It's two. Do I round up? Do I round down? I round it down so it stays the same. 307.38. And there we have it. That is exactly how we round decimals. Oh, we've got another question. I nearly forgot about that one. OK, this question, what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at rounding this one to the nearest thousands. OK, so we're going to now round this one to three decimal places. If you think you can have a go at this, then pause the video and have a go at it now. Otherwise, just listen along and we'll do it together. So I'm going to draw my number. Well, I know I should be using a ruler, but I'm sure if you're doing this at home, you're going to be using a ruler. Let's label my number line. So I know this time I'm doing it to three decimal places. Well, let's have a look. I've got 14.214. So I know that this is my column here that I'm going to underline, and this is the one that I am looking at. Let's draw my number line. 14.214. Two, one, four. What number would be? What's the next hundredth afterwards? Fourteen point two one five. What would go in the middle? Fourteen point two one four five. Now let's look at my number here where would my number go would it go here or would it go this side it's going to go back this side just about here therefore if i'm rounding this number to three decimal places to the nearest thousand am i going to round up round down i'm going to round it down so rounded to the three decimal places this number becomes comes 14.214. Let's have a look at this one. And this one, I'm not going to draw the number line, but if you want to draw the number line, then you've got this example here to help you. So I'm rounding to three decimal places. So I'm going to underline my number, which is in the third decimal place column, in the thousands column. I'm going to look at my two here, right, it's two. Therefore, do I round up or do I round down? I round down so it stays the same. And my number becomes 259.991. Three decimal places. There are three numbers after the decimal point. 
And you would use this exact same process if you were rounding to four decimal places. So if we have a look at this question here, and instead it asked us to round to four decimal places, well, we'd have a look and think, OK, so what number is in our fourth decimal place column? One, two, three, four. OK, there's my two. I look at my four. Do I round up? Do I round down? Well, it's four, so it stays the same. So if I was rounding to four decimal places, it would be 259.99. Oh, it's not very good, nine. One, two. And there we have it. That is exactly how we round decimals to one decimal place, two decimal places, three decimal places, and so forth. We could just keep on going. Let's have a look at our challenge question for today. Now, I've only given you one question because this is a little bit more open-ended. So you can pause the video, have a read through it carefully, and we'll go through the answer tomorrow. Good luck with your My Maths Task children. I look forward to seeing how you all get on. And I will speak to you tomorrow. Bye.